Hey guys, welcome back to the Gas Gas channel. I'm Chad Cooper. Today I want to talk to you about something that's more irritating to a consumer than most things is taking your bike in for service and having crappy returns on that service. Um, I'm just going to go off on an instance. This, uh, I had an experience recently with a local tuner who's, who's very popular in, in, the, in the valley in Phoenix. Um, and I've used him before in the past, like twice, I think. And, and the service has been okay. It's fine. He works out of the garage. He's an old AMRA racer. Um, I don't want to say his name out loud. I think, I don't know, maybe we'll just call this guy <clears throat> Anyway, I take my suspension into and I've got the 48 millimeter Marzocchi forks and it has a PFP adjustment on it. Now these are dual chamber forks. They're not like the open chambers. They're really easy to work on and I can take them apart myself. Now I've done, I've changed forks and seals and wipers and oil on these forks. Uh, last time I put in uh, SKF seals at 110 hours and when I asked him to put in some new seals and wipers, cause one started leaking, the left fork started leaking. Um, but I needed some other service done on the forks um, I had 293 hours on the forks, or on the, actually the seals, the SKF seals that I put in myself, in my garage. Um, now I've changed oil in between those where you just open up and you can drain it and you measure it and put it back in. And it's not, it's not a big deal. Um, my right fork leg, the top compression clicker, uh, when I got the bike, it was real faint from the factory. You could really, you could just barely feel the click when you were turning it. And over time, that the click just went away. So I was always guesstimating and measuring how many turns were on the left one. And then I would just turn, like if it was, you know, five clicks, I would measure if it was, uh, you know, a turn and a quarter out. So I'd measure the other one at a turn and a quarter. Um, so what I wanted him to do was the forks had never been really torn down completely and having that inner chamber taken apart um, and clean and inspected. So I took the forks into him um, thinking that he was going to be able to do that. Um, but upon arrival, when I talked to him in his shop and I asked him what the service I wanted done on it was to take apart that inner chamber, clean it out completely, and then fix that clicker. Um, when I did a search um, on that, that clicker on those forks, a lot of guys have said that uh, they, theirs didn't click also. But when they took it apart, it just had too much grease from the factory. Uh, on that clicker. So I just wanted him to clean it out and just get it back to where it was normal again. It's not a big deal, where I was, I didn't think it was a big deal anyway. Um, so when I brought him to a shop, <clears throat> he told me he doesn't do that. He doesn't take apart the inner chambers on the Marzocchi forks. I, I don't know why. I mean, he's a tuner, you would kind of suspect that he, he would. He's a professional and he's been doing it for years. And he does all these race bikes in the valley and you know, people rave about his service. Um, if I had the KTM dual chamber forks, not a problem, he tells me. He works on KTMs in his sleep. He's a big KTM guy, and you know, these, these days, who isn't, really? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a fine bike. Um, so, oh well, I'm already driven up there. I've gotten my forks and my shock off. So I just tell him, new seals and oil, that's it. Just, you know, I'll do that. So it was about a three or four day turnaround time. He was kind of busy uh, this time. <clears throat> so I went and picked up my forks and I took them home. I put them on that evening. That next morning, I go out for a ride. And I, I kid you not, 10 minutes into my ride, after doing a lap on some single track that I, that I ride around on in my area, I look down and the right fork leg is coated with oil. I mean, it was like there wasn't even a seal in it. It was pretty bad. Um, let me show you a picture on my trailer. Here. Okay, now you can see here, this is where the right fork leg was. Um, to get out to the, my riding area, 
and then get back home, 20 minute drive. So within 20 minutes, bobbing down the road, it, this was all the oil that had come out. And when I got home, I mean, there was still oil, there was enough oil on there that it was still coated and standing on top of the wood, okay? That's the right fork blade. There's the left. It has started weeping now, and they have three hours on the bike. So let me turn this around, and I'll get back to talking to you. Okay, so anyway, I call him up, and I ask him, I didn't ask, I told him, hey, this right, right fork seal, something's up with it. it. I don't know if it just... You know, some things happen, and I'm okay with accidents happening. Nobody's perfect. If you nick the seal, I don't care. Just take care of it. It's not a big deal to me. The only big deal is that it's an hour one way up to his shop. So it's two hours of driving from where I'm at, which I'm willing to do, you know, because I, I need this stuff done. Um, so I get to his shop and drop it off. He's kind of standoffish. He's not really happy that this has happened. He's not really happy that he's got to redo my fork. Here's, the, here's the, the, the clincher that I get is he proceeds to tell me he doesn't warranty seals. And then I tell him, dude, I have 10 minutes on this bike. 10 minutes from this new fork seal. So basically he's telling me he doesn't stand behind his work. But he reluctantly agrees to go ahead and replace the seal. But in the meantime, when he's taking down my information, He's telling me, well, I put a 48 millimeter WP seal in it, and it's the same size. You know what, guys? I don't care if it is the same size or you think it's the same size. If the package doesn't say Marzocchi on it, don't put it in my fork. I don't care if you think it fits. And there's obvious, it didn't fit. So he says it was weeping around the edges. So there's obviously a difference in size, okay? Don't put a KTM product in a bike that doesn't take KTM products. Enough said. These manufacturers go to great lengths to make products and market them and label them for the specific bikes or the Pacific specific brands that you have. If it doesn't say Marzocchi on the package, and you're a tuner, you're a professional, so I know you can get these. You can buy these all day long. It's possible for you. If it doesn't say Marzocchi, don't put it in my bike. I don't want it in my bike. I'm paying you. You're a professional. Be professional. So anyways, <clears throat> I get it back. He calls me the next day. It's done. Okay, cool. Here's one piece of advice. When you go and look for a tuner, and you find a tuner, and you find a good tuner, stick with him. So, I'm gonna plead to you, Rob Kosler from Moto Lab, you gotta move back to Phoenix. We're missing ya. Nice thing about Rob, and this is gonna be for, for any tuners that uh, you're looking for and that you, that you find that's a good tuner. When I went into Rob's shop and met him for the first time, he put all his attention towards me and he acted like my bike was the only bike he was going to be working on right at that moment. I mean, he treated me like he would have treated Cody Webb or Taylor Roberts or Max Gersten. And, you know, and it, and it builds confidence. It puts confidence in you as a consumer to that tuner who's giving you the attention that you deserve because you're paying him a grip load of money to do your forks. This guy, who we say is <laughs> on the other hand, <clears throat> in front of his other customer, when I pick up my fork, proceeds to tell me, so when am I gonna sell my gas gas and get a real bike? Word of advice, <laughs> I don't wanna hear that. I don't care if you like KTM. If I wanted a KTM, I would have bought a KTM, but I didn't. So don't proceed to tell me that my gas gas is not a real bike. I don't know, weird thing. Anyway, to make my story really long, <clears throat> I bring the fork back home, put it on my bike, recheck all my settings like you're supposed to. I've written them down, the settings that work 
for me on my bike from my compression and my rebound and my PFP adjustment on that fork. I put it back on, I go ride the next day. This fork, forks that he's redone, handles like the biggest piece of crap on the planet. I have no idea what he's done to the internals on this fork. I'm suspecting he didn't put the oil back in that the fork had lost because this fork is bouncing off of everything. The t tiniest little rollers or rocks I could float over, no problem, any speed. I have absolute confidence in these forks before I took them to him. <clears throat> these things are just bouncing off of everything in the trail and it's, it's they're loading up and packing and it, I don't know what's wrong with it, but it made the, made that ride pretty miserable that day. <clears throat> so anyways, oh, when I did pick them up also, he tells me that he put a Showa seal in the fork when he redid it. Okay, you've put a, a Honda Showa seal in my Marzocchi fork. Uh, again, if it doesn't say Marzocchi, don't put it in my fork. <clears throat> so I get the bike back. It's handling like crap. I have no idea what's going on. I check and recheck my settings and uh, I take some compression out. It's a little bit better. Um, so I'm guessing he just didn't measure the oil like he was supposed to and, and put the appropriate amount back in to the fork. So which leads me to now, you saw the puddle on the left side. So that left fork that he didn't redo is now leaking horribly. It lasted for two, two and a half hours. So I'm gonna show you, it's still on the bike. So I'm gonna show it to you. This is shoddy work. Okay, I'm over here the bike. Let me show you that fork. Oh, how did that get in there? Oh, let's just get rid of that and never use it again. Okay, anyway, yeah, there's the puddle. This is overnight, okay? I don't know, let me try and get into the fork. I don't, I don't know if you can really see. Uh, let's get down here. Can you kind of see the oil that's uh, building up on that? I don't know, it's hard to tell. Anyway, there it is. Okay, so you saw how crappy that was. Okay, so I had the right fork uh, leaking on me within 10 minutes of riding on the bike. I mean, I got two hours on the bike, or two hours since the forks um, were reserviced um, by so you, you saw that fork and how what a mess it is. Okay, that one's leaking all over the brake and you know it's just making the brake real spongy and slick and not stopping. So I, I gotta redo it myself. I've done forks and seals before on this bike. Uh, a long time ago, I put my own for seals into it, the SKF seals. Like I said, they lasted 293 hours uh, before there was any type of leakage in it. And and that was through, I believe, you know, since 2013, um, late, Late 2013 is when I, I believe I did it, right before I went to St. George. So that bike's been on uh, the Vegas Enduro Cross track since then. It's been in multiple races, a uh, couple of seasons of races with AMRA. Anyway, I'll show you the seals I've got and show the oil I'm going to be using. Um, I'll take this, the forks apart. Once I get these forks apart and once I get them off the bike, I do want to to drop the oil that's in there into a measuring cup. And I want to show you and prove myself that if he did or if he didn't put the correct amount of oil back into the forks. Okay, so the left one's leaking a bit. Uh, so I would imagine it's gonna be, it, it'll be down just a, a little bit. But the right one that he did redo is not leaking at all with the show of seal. All right, let me go show you the seals and the oil I'm gonna be using. And then we'll take these forks apart. Okay, I've got my SKF seals right here and it says 48 millimeter 
Um, seal kit, Marzocchi, 48 millimeter. Imagine that. They actually do make them for this bike. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, you know what? This thing keeps popping up. I, I just, I don't know where it keeps coming from. I keep trying to get rid of it. Okay, and the oil I'm going to be using, I've had real gut. <laughs> and the oil I'm going to be using, I've had really good luck with AMS Oil Shock Therapy Light Number 5 Suspension Fluid. Um, I believe that the other tuner, um, this guy we call Bob, uses Maxima, which is fine. I've used it before, but um, I buy AMS Oil uh, Premix. So I just buy this at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna tear apart those forks and get back to you. Okay, so here we go. We got the uh, leaky fork off. You can kind of see. Yeah, it's obviously leaking. All the goop. Pretty, pretty oil. You can see it just, you can see it just seeping down the tube out of there. Thanks, Bob. Okay, bear with me. I got a small workspace here. Um, I said it wasn't going to do a how to on how to do the fork seals, but I'm going to go ahead and record it anyways. So, bear with me. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I've done my own seals on here. So, I do have to uh, pry this dust seal up. I have the best screwdriver for it. Yes, I do. I actually do. I remember step on how to do this. <laughs> Guys in the background playing basketball. <laughs> Not my thing. Clip in here. Must disperse with this clip. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oop. That's going to be tough to get to here. Let's see. Ah, there we go. The SKFs are real tight in here. I remember I had to modify this clip. I had to actually flatten it out a bit to get it to work. Uh, there it is. Alright, there's the seal. shot here. Let's see if I can adjust this a little bit better. Okay. Back up I don't you don't lose me. You need to miss my handsome face. Your mom I ever told you not to leave your tools laying around? Alright. Stick this in a vice. 
realize that you can't see, but it is here. This way, I'm still here. Handy little, I don't know if you can see through that. You can see through them. Got these 20 years ago at Ace Hardware, and now they're popular. It's so sketchy pulling that out. I hate this one. Still here, don't get scared. <clears throat> there it is. There it is. There's seal, bushings, all the good fun stuff. Springs down inside there. That is the inside of a 48 Miller Marzocchi. And boy, that's dirty. That. Yeah. Nice little O-ring on there. We'll clean it up and grease it. So it slides back in. Oh. Wipe that off. Got my yucky microfiber towel that's all oiled up. There it is. Okay. Dig the spring out. And actually, I can probably just leave that spring in. I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm just going to leave it in there. that out. My dirty ass grease rag. Hey, by the way, I got a doctor's appointment tomorrow at 345. I don't know if you all heard that. Bushings, bushing, one, bushing two comes right off. Okay. So it's a good thing I'm videotaping this. That way, if I get lost, I can just come back to the video. Yeah, bushing's kind of warm. See, that's the kind of stuff that I asked him to look for. Side looks pretty good. It's not bad. Okay, this one, the outside you want to be paying attention to. It actually looks good. 403 hours. Inside's look good. Okay. And this little doobie dum over. Stupid ass seal off. See how easy that came off? I don't even know what he was thinking. Jesus Christ. What the fuck were you thinking? You guys see that little spring? That points down. Down towards the fork. Or the bottom of the fork. Okay. My dust wiper. Off. Because 
here. I'm going to get new ones. All right, let's do let's do something here. Okay, with the old seal. And I got a new seal. They are close. Boy, they are close. Shit. about my calipers but <coughs> okay here's the old seal this is a WP this is Marzocchi to the naked eye you can't really tell a difference they damn near look identical in size. I don't know if you, you can't really see on the camera, but I can see and I can tell right here that that WP seal, I mean, it is just two hairs uh, smaller in diameter on the outside edges. So it's going to leak. Don't use WPs in your Marzocchi forks. But he did replace them with SKFs, actually, like I asked. They were just the wrong ones. Okay, we'll throw those aside. I might as well give them back to him. Okay, mail them back with my disdain. <laughs> phone perch away and replace it with a no-toil perch. <laughs> All right. I'll just use plain old, plain old grease for these. Your dust wiper is going to go on first. I'm just going to grease up the inside of that wiper seal. Okay. Some people may disagree with me that you shouldn't because it might attract dirt. And you can disagree like one. It makes no difference. That's how I do it. All right. Yeah, I can tell that these are a lot tighter. Just a lot tighter. So even even working this dust wiper over this edge is a little sketchy right now because it it is so much tighter that I'm going to ease it. Just ease it over and around, just like that. There we go. Yeah, even the dust wiper is tighter. I can feel it. Still got some grease on there. No big deal. You know what? Throw that off for good measure. That way you're not building it back on there. Okay. Now here's where things get a little tricky because I left my seal bullet <coughs> at home. So, plastic bag. scissors. Cut plastic bag with scissors. All right, that wasn't really cutting or ripping. <laughs> um, some people use saran wrap too. Uh, I've used saran wrap on these to get them to get them over and what you're trying to avoid is this there's little sharp lips in here on that seal I, mean, I don't know go pick one up you'll see them 
these edges right here are super sharp. And so that's what you want to avoid is cutting the lip seal on these edges around this piece right here, this portion. So. This is gonna be too much plastic baggy. Grease. I'm not going to use all of it, so don't don't fret, don't panic. Oh, you anal dirt bike people out there. Okay, maybe I was going to use all of it. Come and stop me. How dare you? <coughs> okay, spring side down. part I hate the most. And this is the part is where you're gonna if you're gonna screw it up, this is gonna be the part to do it in. Okay. And easy peasy. Keep that around, you'll use it on the next one. This little doobie jobber, boink. Actually, fat one first. It drops down. This one, you just spread that apart, and it'll doink, click right into place. Stun. I'm gonna need a new dryer. <laughs> Too fast for these forks. <coughs> I got it. Let's see. Got this little doohickey <laughs> over my wiper. Let's see here. Did I get it? Let's find out. Very carefully. I think it did. Hey, it got in there. All right. That snaps into place. Now the fork won't come apart. All right. Got my dust wiper. Okay. I'm 
put a little oil or a, actually a little grease on it. It'll just slide in a little easier. Ta-da! Ta-da-da! Duh! And, boom! There you go. Get, tighten that little nut. Well, not a little nut. Don't worry, I'm still here. Told you. handy tusk tool. This is for a KYB. Okay, this will take the cap off of your 48 millimeter Marzocchi fork. See? It's right on there. Comes right off. Okay. Now, to fill these, it's not like the old open chamber forks. We had to have that little syringe with a hose and a measuring piece on there to how many cc's this you have to put in the correct uh, cc's on the fork i usually do 320 325 on mine so but you just you pull it down i'll do it for you oh, always asking me to do shit Take your ratio right cup or measuring device. It's just not for two stroke premix. You can use this for your clutch fluid, fork fluid, got my Anzo oil shock therapy. Zzz. I know, I'm not funny. I think that I am. All right, let's see. 320, here we come. Ten ounces. There is a manual online for these forks. So, if you look, I don't have a link, if you look hard enough, you'll find it. And that manual gives you a total breakdown on even how to take apart this dual chamber here. You have to have some special tools. And right now, as of late, I'm not brave enough to take it apart. So don't ask me to, because I won't. I've seen pictures of it, and there's a lot of little crap inside there that I don't want to mess with. A lot of crap in there. <laughs> All right, and just slowly put your oil in. The old open chambers, you remember you had to work them and pump them and this. Nope. Just dump your oil in. Quit fussing, just put it in. Don't be such a baby. Don't you don't you love how the South Africans and the uh, <laughs> South Africans and the Australians say beta for the bike? Beta. Your Beta 300. 
That was terrible. I don't know what accent that was. Or beta. Beta. You get a chance to check out that guy in Australia who does the uh, cross training and enduro cross stuff. He's, he's hilarious. You gotta check him out, but you'll never see his face. I don't know why. Maybe he was disfigured as a child. Yeah, I'm gonna tighten that tighter. Well, there it is. All of you folks, already done. Mm -hmm. Now, go home. It's all over. I'm only doing one, not two. One. You get one. That's it. So, go share. Hey guys, I just want to give you a follow up on the fork seal oil install. Um, I'm out here, I've been out here for about a three hour ride, um, just at a moderate pace, just a little shakedown ride, and so I want to give you a heads up on how those seals held up. Let's uh, take a look at the bike. Okay, here we go. And there, there's a the gas gas in all its glory. I tell you what, that is not, there is not a sexier bike on the planet. God, I love anything Spanish. <clears throat> anyway, let's take a look at these forks. Okay, they look awesome. Yeah. You can see just a little bit of stuff here. That's just uh, residual grease uh, from the seals to get those to slide in easier. <laughs> but other than that, man, it handled beautifully. 320 cc's in each fork leg and I'm even tempted to probably up that by maybe just another 10 cc's uh, There's a lot of drops out here that I like to do off of rocks and into some sandy washes And I want to keep that front end from bottoming out too much well, Yeah, let's take a look at the left one here or the right one. I gotta learn my left from right It's still kind of remedial in that but Yeah, looks looks fantastic Mm. Couldn't have done a better job myself. <laughs> Wait, I did do it myself. Okay, there we go. All done. Thanks for sticking around and hanging with me through this whole painful process. I know this is not much to look at, or this is kind of a voice you don't want to hear. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Anyway, my rant's over. Bottom line is, when you guys are looking for a tuner and you find a good tuner, one that treats you with respect, because remember, you're paying for this service, okay? They want your business, all right? Make sure you find one that's going to treat you like a rock star. All right, you guys, this is my shakedown ride of... Uh, yeah.